from Nikolai Solutions Architect here at Sauce Labs. My role basically is to help enable clients in doing the best possible test automation with Selenium or with any other tools. So what you see here is uh, the Sauce Labs dashboard, multiple tabs on the left-hand side. The one I'm currently pointing to is the live testing. So live testing is basically just like manual testing on different types of devices, whether you can do a live test on a browser or you can do a live test on a mobile real device or a mobile emulator or simulator. I'll show you guys how to do a new live web test. So this is, for example, if you want to test your application on some kind of a browser that you don't have, maybe Safari is a very common one, or if you're using Mac, maybe you don't have a Windows PC and you want to test out your application there. Um, or maybe you wanted to test it on some legacy browser that you know, support, but you don't have on your machines as well. So uh, you can come here, select desktop, and then you'll put in the URL of your application. A lot of our customers will have applications that are behind a firewall, such as a QA environment, right? Maybe you have a QA or staging environments, in which case you'll have the Sauce Connect proxy enabled and you'll just select your Sauce Connect proxy from here. I don't have one enabled, so I don't have any option to choose. Afterwards, you'll select the browser you want to test on. Let's say you want to test on Safari. Um, you can pick your resolution if you want, and then you can pick your version. And afterwards, uh, you click Start Session. And so this is going to start up a brand new virtual machine. Uh, this one is obviously on uh, Safari 13, running Mac, the latest Mac. And so here's that application on here. Um, you can interact with this application just as normal. You can type in you know, the username, whatever, password. You can click the buttons. This, you can check the information about this session if you forget anything. So this will tell you, you know, the operating system in the browser of the session. Uh, you can even invite people to view the session with you together. Let's say maybe you're debugging with your teammates or a developer you can grab this URL and then send it to your teammates and then all you guys can be looking at the same session together. And then you can do stuff like taking screenshots and then if you need to copy any information from here, you know, you can just like highlight, copy, copy it and then send it over to you on your machine. And so then once we stop this session, we can come back here. You'll see that over here, the virtual shows one out of 100 currently. That's because every time we start a live session, it takes away from one of our virtual or real resources because it's a, it's a virtual machine that we're using. So it's very important to make sure that we stop a live testing session at the end. Otherwise, it will just be hanging there. It'll time out after 30 minutes, but you don't want a session being held on for 30 minutes because maybe some of your other team members want to use it for automated testing. And if you guys are at capacity, that one session or those many sessions that are being held up, if they were stopped, then that could have been prevented. So just make sure you stop your session at the end. We can also do live sessions on mobile real devices. So these are actual physical and real devices sitting in a data center that you all have access to. You guys definitely have access to public devices, and then there's also private devices. So here you can see I've selected mobile real. I'm pointing to the same URL as before, and I can select any device from here. For example, let's say we want to test on the latest Pixel, right? So we can search for Pixel, and here's a Pixel XL. We can come here, select it, and launch it. So this will be our application, web application looks on a mobile device. So here it is, you can see, obviously you can test it for like responsive design. You can test to make sure that it works. You can still interact with it just like normal. So you can use the keyboard and so on and so forth. So there are, as you guys can see here on the right hand side, there's a bit more information than there is on a live browser testing session. Um, you can still do stuff as before, like getting the info and sharing. Um, you can restart the device if you want. You can rotate the device to see how it will look in landscape mode, for example. And you can also even, a very interesting feature is setting the GPS. So for example, maybe you guys have an application where based on your location, the recommendations change, right? Like maybe, oh, you're in Germany, 
so um, you're going to get these kinds of results. And so here, it's very easy. You can, for example, zoom out wherever you want to be. So of course, it starts out in our West Coast data center. But let's say you want to put it, you know, maybe in Mexico. So you would just drag it over, um, set the GPS, and now the GPS has been set to the Mexico location. And so now you can test that locale. You can also play around with the Wi-Fi. And then, of course, stopping the session again. Um, that one takes up, as you can see, a real session because that was a real device that we were using. So based on that, um, it took a real session. And then, of course, you can do mobile virtual as well. You can do uh, virtual devices, which are just emulators and simulators. Same thing. You can point it to a URL. You can pick the different versions and operating systems, and then you can start the session. For a live, for manual testing, I, there's not really too much point for mobile virtual sessions. Virtual emulators and simulators are really good for automation and parallelization because you get a lot more of them. They're very cost efficient. And so you can paralyze very easily. But for live testing, I would just recommend you stick to the mobile real devices because they're the most realistic. They're exactly what customers would be using in the field. While virtual emulators and simulators, they are a lot of times not as real as physical devices just because they don't have a lot of the manufacturer um, skins on there. Like Samsung will apply a bunch of their own stuff on there. So these, by default, because we get them from the manufacturers, they don't have those. So just keep that in mind. So that's in terms of live testing. We can also do actual mobile application testing with native applications, right? So maybe you guys have a mobile application that you've developed for Android or iOS. So you can come over here. So instead of cross-browser, you'll be in the mobile app tab. And here you will have all of your apps. So if you have an app that you haven't uploaded yet, you just come here and upload. Um, you can choose your file, upload your Android IPA file or iOS APK file up here, and then they'll be stored for up to 60 days. And so here you can see I've already previously uploaded our mobile app, and here's some information about it. I can click here and say choose a device. So just as before, because this is a real native application, we'll get to choose a device. So let's say we can do something like iPhone. And we can do iPhone 11 Pro, for example, and I'm going to click Launch. And this, this will, again, launch a real device running our native application. So it installed the app, and here it opened up our application. This is what our native application would look like on an iPhone. And again, you can in interact with it just as before, using the uh, keyboard to type. You can click on buttons. For example, if you want to click on the login button, see it says password is required. One very interesting thing here, of course, becoming much more popular, is biometric authentication. So you can actually see here, we have this little icon here that forces you to use Touch ID or Face ID to log in if you don't use username and password. And so we allow you to test that by basically coming over here, clicking the biometric authentication, and you can simulate whether that passes or fails, right? So let's say some you're supposed to have some behavior after the biometric authentication passes. You can come here, click authentication, and say pass. And then that passes a successful signal to our app, letting us know that it passed. Or you can say it failed, and then your app is supposed to respond based on that failure. So that's how you can test biometric authentication. Of course, it has all the other features, as you saw before, like GPS, information. You can even see that some device vitals, for example. And then, of course, stopping the session as well. So if you guys are on legacy RDC, um, you access that through here. And a good amount of our customers are. So actually, what I just showed you guys was what we call the unified platform. Because uh, a few years ago, we bought RDC, which was a totally separate company. Obviously, you guys can tell the interface looks different. And so what we've been doing was merging them together. And so now this interface here is RDC merged together with web testing. And so this is the latest and greatest technologies are here. And everything is working. And almost all the features are supported here from RDC. But yes, as you will notice, RDC is actually now legacy. And so no new features are going to be added to RDC 
Instead, actually, RDC is slowly going to be phased out. And at some point, all of the users are going to be forced to use the unified platform. Mm -hmm.